So this week's project is a super easy window cornice. And just to get an idea of the size that I want really quick, I'm going to draw the wall that it's going to go on and the cornice itself here in SketchUp. So R for rectangle from the origin along the blue red plane. I'm going to draw my wall, which is 10 feet left and right, comma, eight feet tall. Let me zoom out a little bit. And in that wall, I have R for rectangle. I have a window that is 65 tall, comma, 36 left and right. F for offset, and that's my perimeter, perimeter dimensions. So let's go with a three inch offset on the inside just to make this kind of look a little bit more realistic. Let's click the inside, delete it, and let's center this window. Use a window to only select the window. M for move, let's grab the midpoint over here, hold shift to constrain to the red axis, and let's drop it off, referencing off of the midpoint up there. T for tape measure, and this thing is actually 10 inches from the ceiling which I was really close, just not close enough. Let's move it up there and delete that guideline. P4 push pull. Let's pull this window casing out 0.75 inches. Enter just for reference. My wall color is close enough to that. Spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. And I'm actually gonna take this a step further. I'm gonna be drawing on this wall and deleting some guidelines most likely and I don't want to have to zoom out so I don't select the wall. So instead let's right click and lock it which will turn it red when selected. And that means when it is selected no matter how many times I press delete it's not going to be deleted because it is locked. I'm going to turn off the axis just so things don't get a little confusing. And there we go that is a, a pretty much accurate representation of my wall. Let's drop, drop a T for tape measure, a little guideline that is two inches from there and two inches from the other side. And that's, that's a good starting point. Let's go to the front view. And I'm gonna draw over here. I don't know the exact sizes that I'm wanting, so R for rectangle, I'm gonna draw the box material. And let's just go with 0.75 comma 11.25 enter that's a 1 by 12 dimension I'm going to draw the entire profile first and then wrap it around the, a path to give me three dimensions and, and the reason why I'm doing this is so I don't have to mess with any type of compound angled mitered cuts here in SketchUp it's, this is mainly for representation once I get a good representation I can get measurements from it and we don't have to be 100% accurate with uh, specifics in this model. So on the bottom side, I'm going to do a little bit of cove molding. And as I zoom in and zoom out, SketchUp is kind of make this appear and not appear. I don't know why it does that, but anyway, that's what's going on. T for tape measure. Let's drop a guideline right there. And I'm going to use 11 16th cove molding. So 11 divided by 1 6, enter. Another one this direction, 11 divided by 1 6, enter. That is the center point of the radius of the cove. And the cove is going to have a lip of about one, uh, one eighth of an inch. So 0.125, enter. C for a circle. Let's draw a circle here. And I'm only going to use this quadrant down here for my radius uh, right there. L4 line from here to here to here. And let's just trace it out again. This is all model space, so we're not working with components at all. Use a crossing to select two guidelines and the area and part of the circumference press delete now I can delete these guidelines as well no longer needed so there's my little cove molding profile and I do want one little cap on the bottom side so R for rectangle from this corner I'm going to draw a rectangle and change the dimensions to 1.5 comma 0.5 enter and cove molding cap main box piece let's go to the crown molding uh, the dimensions aren't too critical here. I'm just trying to get a feel for uh, how this is going to look. So let's just go with a non-45 degree crown molding. Let's go 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. Let's go uh, vertical. Uh, have a vertical height of 4 inches enter. And just to create some type of shape, let's go 0.125 enter. 
A for arc. None of this is really too important. I'm just trying to get some shape here for the crown molding. So um, one eighth of an inch, an arc, one eighth, one eighth. And let's just do the pretty much the same here. Let's go 0.125. Enter A4 arc from here to here and just give it a little bit of a radius like so. And the back side really doesn't matter. This is again just for visualization. So there we go. I've got, let me delete my guidelines, delete the guidelines. I've got the box piece, crown molding, cove, and bottom cap. And just to make this all work together, I'm just going to delete the interior lines so that I only have one area for all of these pieces. Now let's make a path for this to go along. L4 line, and if I click here and drag this way, it says the green axis is perpendicular to that face. So let's go two inches, enter. Perp perpendicular to the green axis is the red axis. So let's hold shift to constrain to that red axis and drop it off at that guideline. And then make sure we're on the green axis again. And I know I came out two inches, so let's go back in to enter. So these three I can highlight, and that is my path. What do I want to follow along that path? Let's click follow me. And I want this profile to follow along that path. And just that easy with the follow me tool, you can create some really awesome looking moldings. So this is pretty much a very good accurate representation of what this final piece is gonna look like. I'll have the box that is going to go the full height, this crown molding right here, and the cove, and then this base cap. Let's delete this little guideline. And now we can kind of finesse it just a little bit to make sure we have our overall dimensions that we want. And just looking at this, it, it's sticking out too far on either side of the window. So because this is model space, this is not a component yet, we can still grab a face, M for move, and just move it all kinds of crazy directions. Or we could use this to our advantage. So we're gonna use a window to only select that right hand side, M for move, and now we can stretch it or shrink it as needed. So I know that I've started out at two inches away, so let's go in two inches, and I've already used that dimension, so SketchUp wants to snap to that two inches. Spacebar, use a window to only select this side, M for move, and let's bring it in two inches again. And that looks a little bit better. I'm okay with that. So now you can actually finesse the height of it if you want. You can go you know, down to the, as far down as you can without sh showing the top of the casing if you want, or you could really go close to the ceiling and extend it. Um, this isn't really too important to me other than, let's bring this up to the top of the window. I'm actually gonna use a piece of one by four back here to screw it to the wall. So let's actually go up 3.5, enter. And I'm okay with that. That's looks pretty good. Actually, there's one more thing I, did, I just thought of. I've got blinds in my windows and I'm gonna have to have more room for these to come out uh, more room for the blinds to come out so I can replace them if needed or take them out of the brackets. So actually I will probably have to figure out a final dimension here but just as easy as we move the profile left and right now we can move the front in and out. Let's just go another two inches enter. So that gives me a total of four inches right there and without measuring that should really be enough. And I'm actually really happy with that. It looks pretty good and this should be a super super easy project. So very quick you can model your own interior spaces here in SketchUp and give yourself an accurate representation of what your project will look like inside that that particular space. And of course the follow me tool is 100% hands down the best thing for molding. This created uh, this was a very easy way to make all these moldings without any type of complicated angled cuts which really don't even matter here in SketchUp. This is just for visualization and now I can take all my measurements from here to, to determine how much material I actually need. 
But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later.